Welcome to Trauma-Sensitive Yoga as an Adjunct to Self-Compassion Training, a case study. During this presentation, I invite you to consider the following. Why self-compassion is important and how we as a community practice self-compassion day to day. My name is Shelley Gessler. I'm the author of this presentation and will be guiding you through a patient's experience of self-compassion as a therapeutic intervention. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out at the email listed on the title page of this presentation. I became interested in studying self-compassion as a therapeutic intervention after years of training in yoga and meditation. I then incorporated both embodied and more cognitive forms of mindfulness into my sessions as a counseling intern at Northwestern Medicine Central DuPage Hospital over this academic year. From here forward, I will refer to the hospital as BHC. My patient population at BHC mostly consisted, consisted of adult patients enrolled in the hospital's partial hospital and intensive outpatient program. These patients required less intensive care than inpatient or residential, but benefited from a higher level of care than outpatient counseling. At BHC, I taught a weekly 1.5 hour psychoeducation class. One such class was mindfulness, and mostly patients were very thankful for the mindfulness training. Most of the literature that I had read on self-compassion focused on overall mental well-being. More recently, the scope is broadening, now including special populations such as veterans and those with complex trauma histories. I was curious about the application in a par partial hospitalization patient setting. Given my patients' appreciation of mindfulness training, I wondered how receptive they would be to self-compassion training. My intention for a case study was better to understand a patient's experience of a self-compassion program that one, defined the construct of self-compassion and two, had literature and a validated scale supporting its use as a therapeutic intervention. I primarily was interested in, patient ex the, in the patient experience and what we as helpers could learn from their experience. What was difficult for the patient what did the patient find helpful or useful? Was the training impactful? My hope was, ex was that experiential studies may motivate additional studies on the use of self-compassion in a cl clinical setting. The patient studied was a 19-year-old transgender male diagnosed with anxiety and borderline disorders who self-admitted in February 2020 due to suicidal ideation and anxiety symptoms. This patient and I had a very good rapport they were eager to learn about themselves and motivated to alleviate presenting symptoms. The patient's therapy was to include at least one weekly 45-minute self-compassion session over three consecutive weeks. I was familiar with the work of Neff and Germer and chose to follow mind, the Mindful Self-Compassion Program, or MSC using Neff and Grimmer's The Mindful Self-Compassion Workbook, a proven way to accept yourself, build inner strength, and thrive. I based my, fa my facilitation of MSC on Neff and Grimmer's Teaching the Mindful Self-Compassion Program, a guide for professionals. The MSC program includes meditation, psychoeducation, and exercises that help the patient to embody and habituate the three domains of self-compassion as defined by Neff, mindfulness, common humanity, and self-kindness. Patient progress would be assessed using the self-compassion scale at the start and end of MSC training. This scale consists of 26 self-reported items that cover six subscales of self-compassion, including self-kindness, self-judgment, common humanity, isolation, mindfulness, and over-identification. The total self-compassion scale is then derived by adding the mean subscale scores. The patient's mean self-compassion score at the onset of the study was 11.55. Assuming a normal distribution, the patient's score is represented by the yellow dot on the screen, which is almost two standard deviations below the mean reference population.
Also, please note the specific subscores of self-compassion, wherein only mindfulness was comparable to the mean reference population. During the second MSC session, the patient could not tolerate a self-compassion exercise wherein they were to greet themselves as a friend. Symptoms of general anxiety increased, fear, and increased heart rate, and the patient disclosed to me a traumatic history suffered during childhood and adolescence. After consultation with my site supervisor, I terminated the self-compassion training and asked the patient if they would like to try an empirically-based trauma-informed yoga Trauma Center Trauma Sensitive Yoga, or TCTSY. At the time of the internship, I was also participating in a seven month TCTSY certification through the Justice Resource Institute. Comparative to the self compassion sessions, the TCTSY sessions provided the invitation for embodied experiences through invitational language, present moment experiencing, non coercion, and choice making. The patient was free to express themselves without interpreting the content of experience. After two sessions, the patient remarked, despite intrusive thoughts of traumatic experiences and hyperarousal, that they could continue. They also remarked that they felt weird because this, that this experience was new. More research is necessary to elucidate the relationship between interoceptive consciousness and cultivation of self-compassion. While self-compassion experts Neff and Germer do suggest using other therapeutic interventions before starting self-compassion skills training and, trauma and traumatized patients, currently there is no expert consensus advising which interventions would be indica indicated safely and effectively. Additionally, my exploratory case study suggests the need for such investigations, particular, particularly for those with a history of complex trauma. Although Germer and Neff explain the main question of self-compassion training is, what do I need? Compassion from a trauma-informed approach acknowledges that another question is necessary. This question is, what happened to you? To facilitate tolerance and awareness, the first step to self-compassion training and patient populations that likely include many who have suffered complex trauma may be an invitation to embody experience through interventions such as trauma-sensitive yoga. This concludes my presentation. I thank you for your time and appreciate your thoughtfulness to a topic which I think is one that can change the world in which we live for the which we live for the betterment of all of us. The next time you are feeling down, think for a minute what you would say to a friend, and then ask yourself, do I talk to myself like I do to my friend?